Okay, beekeepers, this is my plan. We have known as beekeepers that oxalic acid did a pretty good job of controlling varroa mites, in some cases even a good job, in multiple formats, dribbling, spraying, vaporization. So the advantage to this vaporization process is that you can treat the bees during the winter according to labels and regulations. If you have this stuff sublimate or go directly from a solid to a gaseous form, that it quickly cools back down and puts a light coating of all this oxalic acid all over the insides of the hives, which really seems to cause varroa problems. Well, I hope so, because I'm going to try it. It's winter. Now, I know winter to a lot of you means you got to wear a long sleeve shirt. But to a good deal of us, winter means that we're going to have to uh, really bundle up and go back out here, four or five inches of snow, uh, cold, windy, got my protective, I got a, my camera equipment out there I got to protect. So the real world isn't always as the directions on the back of the package might indicate. So for your video enjoyment, if I can possibly capture the video, I'm going to go out on a winter day, a particularly bad day, because this is the day I've chosen to produce this video, and see if I can make this system work. I have no idea if it'll sublimate correctly with my jump battery, so it's a learning process. You need to know this. I'm not producing this. I'm not talking to you because I'm telling you that I am some kind of authority and oxalic acid use. Nope. I'm a beekeeper trying to read the instructions, trying to explore the internet, trying to go to presentations to find out if this is truly a decent way right now for me to knock down my populations and help get my bees ready for next spring. I have no idea how this is going to work out. So this is me being a beekeeper. This is not me being some kind of perceived authority. So stand by while we get suited up and go out and see if we can make this work. Okay, I can't lie. This may be one of the craziest things I've ever tried, but I thought if you can treat for mites on a day that's 16, 14 degrees out here, I'm not sure, uh, then you can pretty much treat mites within reason anytime, the beekeeper can. There's no brood right now, so I guess with oxalic acid vaporizing, that's one of the things that's supposed to work well. You learn a lot when you come out here and you do this, things that are not really shown on the instructions. You can't wear gloves, it's painful to take them off, but you gotta do that kind of thing. This is the gadget, and I put the material here, the oxalic acid, in a small plastic bag because I'm only going to be doing one colony and doing it as fast as I can. So you take that and you put in one spoon that comes with it, and then you put in the second spoon. I'm putting that away. And then before I spill it, because the cord fights me, I want to slip that in, close this back up. Probably forget it, but there it is. I just brought a cloth. I want to close the entrance up. I have no idea what the brood nest is. The instructions say to put it beneath the brood nest. I'm not going to open the colony. I'm not going to do anything to it. So. Not only can you not wear gloves, you can't wear the mask apparatus that I would like to wear. So, got to go without that. I may step out of the shot here in a few minutes. I'm supposed to turn on the gadget, run this for two and a half minutes. I've got it hooked to a, a jump battery, kind of heavy to pick up. Don't let those leads touch, it'll short out. And it's got a switch on it. I'll show you that later. That was a nice accidental thing that I did so I can control the charge with the switch. So I've got it set up, got the stuff in, two spoonfuls, 35 milligrams I think, I'll confirm that when I get back and give you a subtitle on the video. Turn this thing on, now when I turn it on I'm gonna step back out of the way. I don't really want to stand here and you know be too close to this and do something to myself. Don't want to hurt me or my bees or my camera equipment. I want to do some serious damage to the varroa if I can though. 
So turn this thing on. Let it run for two and a half minutes. Oh, step back out of the way. Wait. Using my new favorite hive tool, my mobile phone, two and a half minutes are up. Let's turn it off. And then wait for 10 minutes. We'll move back away again. 10 minutes are gone. We'll give this a little room like I'm expecting bees to come flying out, but instead I'm expecting, nope, nothing's happening. One dead bee. This thing is still hot. Some of the instructions say dip it in water. Everything vaporized. All I got to do is cover it in snow. And at least the little pot is cooled down. The bees seem quiet. It's, I think it's kind of important that you know the colony next to it here has, a, has the uh, 3 8 inch opening. And this gadget won't go in. So if I were to use it on that, I would have to use a hive tool to snap it open. So I decided not to do that. So I'm going to go back inside, see if we can warm up. We'll discuss it, see what happened, and I'll get out of this odd position where I'm afraid I'm breathing something I shouldn't be breathing. All right, stand by. Well, it's a day later, and as so often the case, nice sunshine, bright, clear day, still kind of cool, but it's really nice to be inside talking about what happened outdoors. Got the, a typical battery here. It's a universal battery and it can be used to run this device and other kind of devices that are similar. Uh, I don't know why I carry, I carry this. It seems to have a handle that works better and consequently I can pick it up, carry it. I can't lie, both of these things are really heavy. So if you're shrewd, maybe you can drive your garden tractor up close, run an extension cord or something, I don't know. But carrying these things around, putting them in a wagon, somehow I might get it done, but I'm not as young as I once was, so consequently, I do like to have the device where I can carry it around easier. In my opinion, this works, but it needs something. Because just to clip these two things together, and then have these cords strung everywhere, that's the least bit clumsy. It works. And I know we jump cars that way and start other electric devices with it. But I really wish that I could just plug this into this 12 volt outlet here and somehow maybe have a switch on it. Even though, as I told you out in the field, that this has a switch here for turning on and off. I'm not selling these. Got the name right there, but this is a common procedure on all of these devices. So decide if you want that or not. I do like it better than an older one I've got where you have to clip this onto the battery terminal to start it up and then unstart it later on. So I like that switch better, but my whole point, I'm not trying to sell you any of this stuff, work out your own system. So the things I don't care much for are the clips that we have to hook up. I wish there was a simpler way to do it. I wish there was some way just to plug something in, unplug it, be gone. I like to be able to wrap the cables around on this device and then I can wrap the uh, fumigation device line around the same uh, holding area here, stick the thing through here and kind of carry it as a unit. So overall, it's really straightforward. Uh, the question is, is this just a system that some of you want to use or not? So what I've tried to do is to go through my initiation process it was really kind of an old product. Oxalic acids, we've known, uh, people have known it would control Varroa for a long time, but it just took a, quite a while to get it approved for legal use. I really don't want to recommend that you use anything but the stuff, the material that is approved for controlling Varroa. I know you can buy other products that are mostly oxalic acid through and through, practically anywhere. I'm not going to say where, but it's easy to get. But none of that's really approved. None of that's, none of, point blank, none of that's approved for B use. So should you do that, and should you get in trouble, in what way, I don't know, but should you, 
not going to read well, so do what you think you got to do, but I would recommend that you get the oxalic acid control product from approved bee sources. So that's it. What we tried to do was to go outside, talk to you about it, set things up, show you how it goes. On the other video, showed you this stuff smoking and steaming away. See if this whole process is for you. It's an unusual aspect of the royal control in our modern day beekeeping procedures. If you try it, good luck. Be careful.